I'm actually optimistic about the future of Christianity and evangelicalism in America. In some quarters, there's a lot of doom and gloom. People will talk about this book, The Last Pagan Generation, about how you know the pagan faith went extinct at the end of the Roman Empire. I don't think that's going to happen here. I don't certainly don't think that it's fated to happen here. Evangelicalism gets a lot of knocks for a lot of things, but it also has a lot of strengths and virtues. And one of them is its adaptability. This is a movement that has been able to adapt to many different geographies, many different times and places, many different cultural conditions. So I think it has in its DNA the ability to adapt to the negative world. Again, we have to think differently about how we live in the negative world, but I think we can very much do that. And I don't think in the negative world that there's just going to be one strategy for the age or two strategies for the age. I think there are going to be multiple strategies that emerge. I think we need to have multiple strategies. I think we need to have less formula and cookbook approaches. We're going to need to constantly adapt as the world continues to rapidly change. But I think that it's something that we can do. To help the church adapt to the negative world, I and some others co-founded a new nonprofit called American Reformer. And we are trying to bring the best of the Protestant tradition to bear on the problems of today. It's not enough just to critique wokeness. What should Christians be thinking and doing about race? We want to think about that. We've written a lot about political theology. What should the relationship between the church and the state be? How should Christians and the church engage politically, if at all? And we're doing that, again, through the lens of what Protestants have always taught, going back to the Reformers themselves, or even back to some of the pre-Reformation figures like a Thomas Aquinas.